I'd like to share with you some of the things that I learned about the use of a Bowie and the way the different currents work. Years ago, I went to a seminar by Valley Lab talking about the use of the Bowie, and I really thought that I knew most of what was important to know, and I only went to get the CEU. But actually, there was something I learned that night that was very valuable and that has actually translated, made a difference to some of the surgeons that I've worked with that have used that principle. For instance, the plastic surgeon that we do a lot of reductions, when we've done reductions using this principle, we've actually cut 10 minutes off each side. So what is that principle? I want to talk about the different currents. And the thing that I learned that night that was so important was that the cut should be two to three times what the coag is. And I don't see that this is a common knowledge in the operating room, but it's made a big difference for the surgeons that have used it. I find that three times is not something that seems to be as effective, that twice as high is usually just as effective. So on the coag, usually you're going to get a 30 to a 40, and on a cut, a 50 to 60 is usually very effective. So let's talk about the different currents and how they work. Here's a little video of a coag. So the coag, you have a medium heat that's being with a steady spike that runs all the way across with not, no cooling off time. So what you're going to have with this is going to be a slow burn that's going to burn the tissue that you're holding and the surrounding tissue. You're going to have spreading collateral heat going with that. Uh, you can compare it with a, a steak being cooked on a medium heat, that the heat's going to go into the steak and it's going to make it uh, more done on the inside as well as the outside. So the coagulation usually is about 30 to 40, depending on what the surgeon wants. And obviously, this is all surgeon's preference. The cut, on the other hand, has this kind of current going through it. You're going to have, it's going to be low, and then all of a sudden a high spike, and low, and then another high, maybe two high spikes at a time, and then a downtime. So if you put that at 50 to 60, you're going to think that, logically, this sounds like this should mean that it's going to be hotter, the tissue. But what the principle is on this is that you have this high spike that you have a cell that has a lot of fluid in it. It's actually going to hit that fast and it's going to vaporize that cell. And in the vaporization, the heat is going to be dispelled when that, that cell vaporizes and the heat's going to be dissipated in that. And it actually works. If you take a... Um, tissue that's just been used with the cautery, with the coagulation, you're going to find that the and you feel that surrounding tissue, you're going to feel it's much warmer than when you turn and you use that cut on 60 and then you feel the tissue, it's much, much cooler. So how do you get the coag with a cut if you're going to be using the cut? Well, that's where the blend comes in. What does the blend mean? The blend means that you're adding coagulation to the cut. So you don't usually want to just do pure cut because if you're doing pure cut, it's cutting through the tissue without letting any coagulation. So if you go through a blood vessel, it's going to bleed. So the, the lower the blend number, so blend one would have the least amount of coag added to the, to the current of the cut. And a blend two would have a little more coag. Some machines only have one option. It's either blend or pure. So you add the blend to it and then as the doctor's going through, and doing the cut, or if you're doing the cutting, as you're doing the cut, it's going to coag the vessels as you go. And you can see a difference. You can find that you're bleeding when you, you're doing the cutting and you think, why is it bleeding so much? And then you happen to look over at the machine and they have it on pure. So you want to make sure and check that and make sure that it's on a blend. But it's really been quite effective. The third type of current you have is the bipolar. And the bipolar is tong with electrocytes, but the it's only going to uh, try to get it so you can see it. It's going to only going to coagulate between the tip of those forceps. So you're not going to coagulate any surrounding tissue. And when this would be important is if you're doing anywhere, if you're doing spine surgery, you're near a nerve. If you're doing facial surgery, you're near a nerve. If you're doing a uh, radical neck. And so anywhere where they have a nerve that they're concerned about that they don't want adjacent damage, they're going to be sure that they use the bipolar. The other place a bipolar is um, frequently effective is if you're doing a muscle, if you're burning the muscles. Sometimes you're burning the muscle with a bobie because it's a large area and it's not an area where there's any nerves 
But what you find is you're using a current. So when you use the current on a muscle, the muscles used to being electrically stimulated, and this is an electrical current. Current. So when you use the bovie, it's going to be jumping like mad when you're trying to burn it, and it's, and it's hard to get it to burn as much. So you do the bipolar, and you're only stimulating between that, so you're not going to have the muscle jumping like that. So how do you actually use the bovie? Well, what I found, this is something I actually learned from a resident, is rather than just hang the bovie off like this, it can slide back and forth. And as it slides back and forth, you may get it too, too shallow as it slides off the table, and then you don't have enough length and you can't pull it back because you don't want to contaminate it. So the best thing is to put a little loop in it, and when you put that loop, it's not going to pull it's only going to have the loop to pull. It's going to stay secure. And in that loop, you fasten to your table. And then I take my free end. If the bovie's behind me, and I actually hang this over the handle of the bovie. And what that does is it keeps it off the floor, and it makes it available for the circulating nurse when she goes to plug it in. So how do you use the bovie? When you're using it, you want to actually kind of have this blade. Here's your coag. Here's your cut. So you want to have it like a knife so that when you use it, you're cutting. Um, and so you put it up and down like that. Then if you're coagulating the vessel, you just you don't have, need much pressure. You just, you just barely touch it, and that's going to coagulate it. In fact, you can see it start coagulating before you get there. You want to keep it moving a little bit because if you don't, as the char forms on that vessel, it's going to uh, char too the blade and then it's going to stick to it and when you try to pull it off you may pull off and get things bleeding again. Sometimes you get a, a an area that no matter how much you bovie it you can see it still keeps oozing through and I don't know why this works better uh, but sometimes but it does. Sometimes you can stop it by just sticking your forceps onto it and coagulating the, the forceps that way and that will actually stop it. Other times it may be bad enough that you actually have to grab that vessel if you can find it. Um, sometimes you actually have to take the char back off and then um, coagulate it, or once in a while you have to stick tie it. Now, say you're doing your assisting and the surgeon has put his clamp, either a mosquito or a hemostat, underneath some tissue, some muscle, or just some random adjacent t connective tissue, and he wants you to burn through that, like on the parotid or on a muscle, and um, he wants you to go through it. How do you do that? You want to be sure you just bovie with a tip through. You don't want the tip down farther because, as you see, if you do it too far down, then you may be burning tissue beneath where you want to. So you want to keep it on the tips and just burn it to the tip. If you're cutting, you you just want to keep. You don't want to go too fast. If you go too fast, you won't have the coag with it. But you want to kind of just go at this speed. Okay, and also if you're doing a, a, an area that's near the skin, you want to be sure that you have this whole length is electrified and this whole length will burn. So you want to be sure that none of that touches the skin, so you always want to be aware where the skin is. I hope this helps.